So I've been lucky enough to have a PS5 for a couple of weeks now, and well, is the PS5 worth buying? Let's find out. Here we are with yet another video. G'day guys, my name's Champ, and if you guys do end up enjoying this PlayStation 5 video, make sure you smack that like button real good, and also subscribe if you're brand new around here. But anyway, the PlayStation 5, well, this is the box. It's pretty big, it doesn't even fit into frame. That's the PS5. Is it worth buying? Well, I'm gonna say right off the bat, yes. Now, obviously, that's a loaded question, and that answer, it's pretty simple, and it doesn't really suffice. But what I will say is, I've been having a lot of fun with my PS5, but is it worth buying one right off the bat and overall? That's the thing that we're gonna talk about in this video. I do think it is, it's an amazing console, but there are a lot of things that we have to talk about. And the first thing is that you're going to notice this right away when you turn on your PS5. If you do end up getting one, or if you play one that your friend has and you're deciding to get one, is how much faster everything is. It's truly, truly something else. The PS5 is just incredible when it comes to speed. You're loading up games, just, it blows your mind just how quickly games load in fast travel on Spider-Man, for example, or even just loading into a game of NBA 2K, it's like that. It's literally 1.5 seconds or two seconds or something along those lines, rather than 30 seconds around that time. And officially the PS5, along with that SSD, does bring in a hundred times faster speeds than the PS4, which is amazing. So basically what I'm saying is, if you're sick of the load times on your PS4 console, and also just you want an upgrade overall, it's definitely worth upgrading just for the sheer speed of the console and no load times essentially. They're pretty much not there anymore. Now that is a huge positive on the console's end, but it does come at a price. And that's the next thing I'm going to touch on really quickly is the price of the PS5. Here in Australia, it's like $750 to get yourself a PS5. It's pretty ridiculous. It's, it's very expensive. And the thing is, you can't even get one. So that does make it tricky. And I've seen a lot of people out there, I'm probably gonna do a video on this, is people spending thousands of dollars on PS5s to get them now. But I don't see the point of that. And that's where I would say it's not worth spending a stupid amount of money on a PS5 or even an Xbox Series X at this point in time. And that takes us to the next point in a second, but really quickly, I will say the price of games have also gone up by a little bit, not all games, but a lot of games, and it does seem to be trending that way. So if you are short on some money, definitely don't upgrade just yet if you are in the position to get a pre-order for December or January. Maybe just wait a little bit till more games are out and until it's really usable at that crazy price point that the console is. But we want to talk about the games because that is the one thing I feel like is holding back the console and it's not just the PS5, it's also the Xbox and it has to actually do with last generation. It seems to me that a lot of these games aren't true next gen games at launch. Obviously they are meant to be but they're not truly, truly next gen because they're being held back by their ports on the original consoles as the PS4 and Xbox One are. Now, what I specifically mean by that is that games aren't true next gen games just yet because they're being ported over from their PS4 counterparts. So for example, Spider-Man Miles Morales is sort of being held back and obviously they didn't have too much time to develop Spider-Man Miles Morales, but it's being held back by its PS4 counterpart and then also specifically look at a game like Cyberpunk 2077, which is releasing next month. That game will not actually be a PS5 version of the game when it comes out. It will be playable on PlayStation 5, but it won't be the true next gen version of the game. That's coming out next year sometime. It's not out till 2021. So that's kind of disappointing that you'll just be playing a ported version of the PS4. Obviously you'll get better performance than that, but it's not that true next gen leap. You're essentially playing a PS4 remaster in a weird way. So that's my only issue if you're going to buy a PS5 right now. It's just kind of being held back by the last generation still, and that's gonna go on for a little bit of amount of time, but eventually we'll see true next gen games, and I don't think it's worth buying one if you're gonna spend an insane amount of money outside of retail price 
So yeah, please don't spend stupid amounts of money on the console because then it won't be worth buying it. But if you're still buying it and having fun with it at a retail price, it's probably worth buying. Now, something else I wanted to mention is the controller. Now, I've obviously done videos on the controller already, so I won't get too crazy into it, but I think this thing, it shocked me. I didn't realize that it was going to just make me not like other controllers anymore. Like, I've really gone away from controllers with the mouse and keyboard over the past few years, but this has kind of brought me back, obviously, some more casual games and whatnot, not first-person shooters and stuff, but yeah, it's just something about this. Everything in it, the shape, uh, just everything. It, it feels next-gen. The, the triggers, the rumble, everything within this controller feels next gen. So this is probably the most next gen feeling thing about it besides the speed of the console and even the UI of the PlayStation 5. That's another thing I wanna to touch on. But yeah, if you wanna see my full uh, thoughts on the controller, I've already done a video on that. So go check that out. But it is an amazing controller. It's definitely a thing that's kind of sucked me back into consoles, definitely. So yeah, it's, it's probably the best thing about the PlayStation. And also the UI. The UI has been amazing so far. It's still not perfect. I still prefer the Xbox's UI. It just seems a lot more smooth and a lot more intuitive and it's user friendly. But it is a massive improvement over the PlayStation 4's UI. So the PS5 UI is a big point right there to get yourself a PS5. Now I could go on and on and on about different features about the PS5, but I just wanted to quickly let you guys know that I'm having a great time with this and I do think it is worth grabbing one. But also, again, don't buy one if they're going to be resold at $1,000 plus or some ridiculous cost because I don't think they're worth it just yet at that price. And they will come down in price and then more games will be out. So it's probably worth waiting if you haven't already got one for yourself through the initial pre-orders. But anyway, that does it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. These are just my honest thoughts. I didn't want to get too crazy with it. Just my first impression, I guess, after two weeks and what I think of the console and if it's worth grabbing. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Please smack the like button if you did enjoy this video. But anyway, that does it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.